I hope you're all well. Before we get into today's video, please make sure that you are subscribed to the channel, that you hit that notification bell to be notified of when I upload new videos, that you're also following me on Instagram because I've started doing a lot of videos and uh, pictures up on Instagram, so make sure you follow me there. And also come and join us in our group, UK Cricket Creators. You do not need to be a member of the UK, uh, but you do need to love your cricket. You do need to want to get into cricket if you haven't got a cricket. And you do need to answer the questions to enter, but we have lots of great things going on in the group. And we've started doing uh, these virtual live Zoom events, which are great fun. We all sit together and craft. They're fantastic. We don't charge for them, they're absolutely free. It's just nice to sit and craft with friends in the comfort of our own craft rooms, especially uh, in today's kind of world where there's lots of things going on. So let's get into today's video. I'm going to show you how you can create layered mandalas from scratch, and you can do this with a huge, huge amount of images from Design Space. So we're in Design Space and you can see I've got lots of mandalas here ready to go. And these are all from actual uh, basic one layer images, which is what we're going to do. We're going to create layered mandalas from one layer images. I will actually link to this file, so I'll make it uh, available in the community and you can then click the file in the description or click the link in the description, I should say, and it will bring you into this design space window and you can actually just create any of these if you want to. They're all pretty good and easy to cut. The only ones that take a little bit more time are the parrot and the unicorn. The parrot, the last layer, there is a quite a lot of cutting there, so it does take a good fair amount of time to cut. The unicorn, is not the easiest in the world. It's very, very, and um, there's some really fine cuts in there. So you want it to be quite large and you will need a certain amount of cut time. I mean, I think the top layer took about an hour to cut. So you'll need a bit of patience with that, but it's well worth it because they are beautiful. So I'm going to show you how you can actually create these layered mandalas. And the great thing about them is you can cut them in any material. It doesn't have to be cardstock. You could do them in vinyl, iron on, whatever you want. I really like them in cardstock, but equally something like this would look lovely on a t-shirt as would the parrot. So you've got lots of options. We're going to go into images. And first of all, we're gonna browse all images. So the first place to start is obviously mandalas. And you can turn pretty much any of these into a layered mandala. There are already layered mandalas in design space, but some of these are gorgeous, like the dolphin, the dog. The main thing about turning an image into a mandala is it must have a solid outline and then it must have middle pieces for you to be able to bring back and to take away so that you can see those different layers of cardstock or vinyl or iron on, whatever it is you're working with. So something like that works really well. All of these work really well. This one will work well. This one will work well. As I say, anything with a solid outline that you can then bring back middle pieces will work really, really well. So kind of anything like this and like this, fantastic. All of the letters and the numbers you can do this with. Some, for example, like the eagle will be more in depth working with than others. And I suggest you start a little bit easier than going straight into the deep end. So really easy ones to start with are actually geometric animals. And there are lots of geometric animals in design space and they're all really beautiful. I mean, I love, love, love some of these. And you can actually use layered ones as long as they've got a solid outline. So something like this we can work with. So we'll select that one just to be able to show you. But there are lots of ones that you can work with. So the rows you could work with because you've got all these different ones here, so you can add those different layers. In fact, let's select that one as well. 
Butterflies are another great one. There's lots of great images to work with in design space butterfly wise. Something like that will work really well. Uh, even something like that because you've got all those little pieces on the outside. This one would work really well. These would work really well. So lots and lots of options work with the layered one first. The most important thing is that you're choosing the layer with the outline and the most kind of center pieces that you can work with. So if we ungroup this, we can see that background, I can't do a lot with it because there's nothing in there to contour away or to contour back. So there's nothing for me to work with. This one is the layer that I want to work with. So I'm simply going to delete that and we're gonna work with this layer. So the first thing I want to do is go to my contour and my contour will always come up in the middle of my screen. So if I want to see what's going on on my screen, I can bring my image over to the corner there. And I can make it small if I want to see it a bit better because the size I can increase or decrease at the end. So get my contour and for that first layer, very simple, I'm going to hide all contours. And this will just give me the background. The difference with this background and the background we just had was the background we just had didn't have any of these pieces. So I couldn't bring them back. Whereas where I hide all the contours on this one, I've still got these pieces to bring back, which will create my layered mandala. So I've got my basic layer there. I can then duplicate it and I'm going to change the color on it and I can change it to any color I want. And I'm then going to go to my contour. And now I'm going to start bringing back some of these pieces. And when I bring them back, you'll see they then cut away to reveal the color layer behind. So I'm gonna do all of these outer ones so that my teal is showing through. The most important thing with creating these mandalas is that you keep the outline. If you remove that outline, you're going to completely change the way that your mandala works and you're gonna end up in a little bit of a pickle. So always make sure that this outline stays as it is. You do not want to touch it. If you do, then you can simply just bring it back. I then want to duplicate that layer. And again, I'm going to change the color. This time, let's change it to an orange. And so anything I cut away at this point will be purple. So if we go to contour and let's do all of these ones. Then duplicate and you'll see each time because we're duplicating one layer at a time anything we've cut away before will be shown so we don't have to know where we've been because we can see where we've been in our contour tool so let's change this one to a blue and go to contour and of course anything now will show that orange so if we select this one and the middle it will show the orange now we have a choice we can leave it like this so if we wanted these two petals to remain solid that's completely up to us it's how you want it to look it's up to you i like it so that my outline my top layer is just a solid outline but it's completely up to you so i'm going to duplicate it again and i'm just going to make that outline black just so it's nice and pops we can select it, go to contour, and then just contour out those last two pieces. And then all we're going to do is draw a square around all of them, a line and center. And you've then created your layered mandala. So exactly the same with this one, it's layered, so we're going to ungroup it. And we want to work with this layer because it's got the most going on and it's got that solid outline as well. Exactly the same, contour. And for that first layer, we're going to hide all our contours. So we've just got that background. 
and let's make that background a let's go for a light pink in fact let's go to advanced and let's bring our sliders across to the pink side and let's make it a nice light pink. Of course, our colors in design space don't have to be the colors we're putting on our mat, but it's nice to have them close to the colors you're working with, with your cardstock or your vinyl or your iron on, because it's a nice guideline for you to work from. I'm then going to duplicate that. And for the duplicate, I want to make it a slightly darker pink. And we're then going to go to contour and we're just gonna start selecting some of these pieces. Sometimes you may find that you go to select something and your mouse just won't go over. So you can zoom right in and try and get it that way. It doesn't always work. So you can go down your layers panel and use this here to work out which pieces of these highlighted ones you want. So it's this one here and I can select it down that way if I want to. So you've got two options. There we go. And then we'll do one final layer. So duplicate, change the color again. And let's go even darker this time. Contour, and then just contour those last two pieces. Again, highlight, align, and center. So exactly the same contour and hide all contours so we're left with that basic shape and let's keep the color of that black and we'll go to duplicate and we're going to change the color and I'm just going to go for a let's do a gray and it can be a silver in cardstock go to our contour and of course anything we contour on this layer will be black happy we can highlight all align and center so let's do the duck and this time with the duck I'm going to be a little bit more methodical so exactly the same method contour and hide all contours back layer I want to be white so we're just going to grab a white layer and then I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to make the next layer orange. So I'm going to select the orange layer and anything I contour out will then be white. So let's do some white feather pieces. So our next layer, so I'm going to duplicate and our next layer I'm then going to be green. And the reason I'm going to have it green is because that's going to be my eye. So when I contour out this layer, we're gonna see the orange underneath, and that's gonna be my bill and my feet. So contour. So we'll just contour these bill pieces. 
So then duplicate the next layer. And this one we want to be kind of gray. So let's go and get a gray. Let's do a light gray. Contour. And we're just gonna contour out that one eyepiece. So we've got that bright green emerald eye. Duplicate the next piece. And I want that to be slightly darker gray. And then if I want to, I can leave it like that. Like the last layer, it doesn't have to just be the outline. It can be however I want it to be. So if I'm happy with it like that, I can leave it like that. So once I'm happy, I can highlight it all, align and center. And because you've kept that outline, it will center perfectly. You can see we've got each of our layers there and I've color coded them so I know what color they need to be. I can go to continue. I'm using my maker today, but you can do this on an air. And of course, depending on the size, you can do it on the joy as well. I'm going to be using lots of different Cricut cardstock. So if we go to browse or material, I'll probably use some foil craft board holographic. I will probably use some glitter cardstock. If we search for deluxe, I'm going to use some deluxe patterned paper. And if we also search for, actually let's use sparkle, I'll probably use some Cricut sparkle paper as well. Please make sure that if you're going to use different materials for each of your layers, that you come in and you change your cut setting for each layer. some double-sided foam roll here and it's really important whether you are gluing or you're using foam that you put it on the back of the layer that you are placing down because if you glue this layer or you put foam on this layer when you come and add this one you may be able to see the pieces so you always want to glue on the top layer that you're putting down onto. You also want to make sure that you know what order your layers go in. So I'm just gonna come in and add some double-sided foam. And then I'm just going to use my Cricut True Control knife just to take off that top layer to reveal the sticky bit of the foam. I love my True Control. It is one of my most used tools, it really is. Once I'm happy with my foam placement, I can come in and I just like to hover over and make sure that I'm getting that placement exactly 
where I want it. And I can then stick it down. I can then do the exact same thing with my next layer. except for our last layer and your last layer undoubtedly is going to be the most delicate of them. Trying to add foam circles or foam strips to this is going to be quite difficult so you've got a couple of options. You can come in with a wet glue and just make sure you've got a really fine nib on it or you could use a stick and spray be that a permanent spray adhesive or something like the Crafters Companion uh, repositional stick and spray. It's completely up to you. I'm going to use the Crafters Companion repositional stick and spray adhesive. I'm just going to go outside and spray it because it makes a lot of mess in here and I'm just going to give it a quick spray, leave it to go tacky and then I can place it on top of my mandala. There we go, there is our beautiful layered mandala that we have made from scratch. I know it seems really daunting, I promise you, if you do it a layer at a time and you take your time and you just make sure that you do not remove that outer layer, you'll be absolutely fine. As I say, I am going to link in the description to the community link. There's half a dozen images in there that I've done, so please feel free to use those and have a little play. And the great thing about those is you can actually go in and look at how I've done them and you can look at each layer and it will help you. Maybe try and copy one and do it that way as well if you're a little bit confused. But I promise it will all start to make sense and you'll be able to create some lovely items, not just out of card, but vinyl and iron-on as well. As always, thank you for watching. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you've got any questions, please do ask them. Please make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you all again next time. Bye.